So I, uh, I really hope that I'm going to be able to get through this. Uh, I need, probably should just calm down, but I don't, I don't have time to calm down really. Uh, okay. So on the way out here to talk to you, I'm just walking across the, the lawn and like five, six feet in front of me is the biggest freaking snake I've ever seen. I mean, it's a garter snake. It's still a garter snake. I don't think we have like scary snakes up here or whatever, but all snakes freak me out. And, um, it was huge. I, it, it's the biggest garter snake that I've ever seen by a factor of like 9,000. It is, it was huge. And it was just right there and it did its little thing. And then it sat right there outside of the door and I, couldn't get in here. And, um, now I'm in here cause it, it's, it slithered away and there's nobody to come and like fix it for me. And it's very scary. And so now I'm like convinced that I'm just going to stay in here all day. And I don't think I can because, um, I have to make bath bombs for this video and that's what we're doing today. We're making bath bombs and I'm sorry if I triggered you all with, with snake talk, but I'm really triggered and freaked out right now. And there's that. I will tell you about the bath bombs that we're going to make today as soon as I'm allowed out of this place in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. Oof. Yeah, I'm on edge. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 278 of 365 days of soap. And today we are making Epsom salt bombs to go along with all the cool fruit bomb or fruit soaps that we made earlier with the white claws and then all the weird things that we did for like the orange crush and the dragon fruit. And yeah, and um, they're gonna be cool. Uh, Epsom salts bath bombs are a really cool thing to put into your line just in general because detoxifying bombs are very awesome so we are going to uh, go make them and we're going to talk about them and i'm gonna calm down between now and the next time you see me really so let's get to the video and uh we can talk about all things detox bomb Okay, change of plans. While I was being held hostage in the pontoon by a creepy snake that wanted to eat me, I checked with the Discord and got caught up on all of the messages at the Soap and Clay Discord. And the theme of this week's messages really were a lot of woes about, you know, broken bath bombs. So we are still going to make uh, all of the corresponding bath bombs that go with the fruit soaps that we made a few weeks ago. But I'm going to throw some batches, uh, kind of. I'm not, re I'm not really throwing batches. So the recipe for all of them is as follows. Two cups baking soda, one cup citric acid, one half cup Epsom salts, one half cup cornstarch, one tablespoon water, one tablespoon lightweight oil, and your one tablespoon of your scent. Here's what I'm gonna do. These first two bath bombs that you're watching being made. So this one, orange and green swirl. Remember that. And the next one, which is a pink uh, and green bomb, one half pink, one half green, I am going to store in an area of my shop that is not humidity controlled. Now, my shop itself is about the size of a two car garage and I have two little dehumidifiers in the part of the shop where I actually store my soaps and bath bombs and things. 
And these little humidifiers, they were only about 50 bucks a piece, but they are workhorses. They do wonderfully if they're, you know, in this one area. So essentially half of my soap shop does not have a dehumidifier though. So these two bath bombs are going to be stored as far away from the dehumidifiers as possible. That's where they're going to firm up and cure. And we are going to see just how big of a difference the humidity in a room makes. Probably to help you understand the importance of a dehumidifier. So again, no extra, you know, waters or whatnot are going into these. It's a fairly humid day right now. I mean, I live in the Pacific Northwest. So for me coming from Colorado and, you know, Southern California, uh, this is super humid. But you guys live all over the world in wildly more humid conditions than I do. So humidity is something that you definitely deal with all of the time. For me right now, uh, the humidity is decent. It's raining or, you know, whatever. And it's all the things. So this particular, this is one of the two that will be stored right next to the dehumidifiers like they always are while they you know firm up and get ready for you know making really and or for packaging and so this one is going to be the orange crush and so that's the blood orange so this one will be an orange and blue swirl and the next one is uh half red and half purple i believe or half red and half green i don't know did i make one purple that would be strange well, anyway, so this is, you know, the, the the plan with all of these. But to the, if you live in a, a non-human environment, just because of the extra addition of the Epsom salts, I would recommend putting in a little bit extra. I'll be goddamned. I made it purple and red. Why did I? Oh, for that one. Great. Cool. I thought I was still doing the, or the um, dragon fruit one. Very confused. Anyway. If you live in a humid environment or a not humid environment, I would recommend putting in an extra half a tablespoon, two tablespoon of water because of the extra salt that's in it. Because they can get a little dry and crumbly if you're not careful. Now, the big conversation that we had on the Discord or that was being had on the Discord was, you know, everybody's kind of pain with uh, bath bombs and how it's like their Everest. And that's the that's true of so many soap makers. It's it's their Everest. And I had to remind people on the Discord that the only reason that I that this looks so easy for me is because I have made literal millions of bath bombs at this point. I teach classes for this. There are, you know, tons and tons and tens of thousands, if not more, people that have taken classes from me. And I have to ensure that all of their bath bombs are great leaving the shop. So I've had a lot of practice. And so don't beat yourself up, I guess is the point that I'm trying to make. Eventually, once you figure out all the parameters, every single batch of bath bomb will be perfect no matter what. Now let's go look at the ones that I messed up. Okay, so first up are the two bath bombs that I stored right next to the dehumidifier. And you can see all the speckles from the Epsom salts. That is great. They are nice, firm, hard bombs. None problems whatsoever with either one of these bath bombs. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and dip all of these in melt and pour because I wanted to give like a nice shiny top because it's been a while. These two are the ones that were stored as far away from the dehumidifiers as humanly possible. And look at that. They're warty. They're not a lot of fun. And here's the other. Not a lot of fun. But wait, there is more. Um, I'm also going to show you really what the worst offenders in these batches did. Because right there, that says that the bath bomb itself took on too much moisture. And the reason why it took on too much moisture is because it was pulling from the air. That's what those batches were doing. They were away from the dehumidifier. So if you live in a very humid environment, A, get yourself a dehumidifier, yes. But two, maybe eliminate the water altogether in this recipe and you're going to have a wildly better time. That is not a good time. And I cannot tell you how many people I have talked to that have said their bath bombs look like this all of the time. 
and it's frustrating and you start playing with the differences in the water you start putting in alcohol or witch hazel or whatever and you're still ending up with this very strange mess get a dehumidifier they're very important also eliminate all of the water don't put in more liquid don't don't do that that's not going to be your friend if you're dealing with bath bombs like that but here you go that's day 278 the summer soap fruit bomb things and there they are the uh, four new epsom salt bombs for the summer line scented with all the fruit scents that we used for the fruit soaps also for the summer line and they're awesome as i said uh, detox bomb putting something with epsom salt in it going to be a really good product offering for all of your lines because well there are a lot of reasons why there are aches or pains or just a need to soak in you know an epsom bath so there you go and it's rather easy to incorporate these uh if you live in a drier environment i would i would suggest putting in like an extra tablespoon or so of water if you're going to be working with the salts in addition to you know everything else that goes into the bath bombs so there's that for sure if you're living in a humid environment you probably don't need to do that but you know just you know what works for your bath bombs and if you don't i've put out tons of tips and tricks and also have talked about those tips and tricks in this video too so there's that if you're interested in purchasing these bath bombs yeah they're going to be available super soon and i'm super stoked at soapandclay.com because we're coming back online baby and i'm so jazzed and you know when it happens you guys will be the first to know because you are my sudzers, assuming you've subscribed and done the things. So thank you for being my sudzers and being subscribed and all the things. Yes. Uh, if you're interested in seeing where else I post a, when the website comes back up, obviously go to the website. You'll get notified via text or email that way. Or go follow my social medias because I'll also be putting out posts there. I've taken a very long sabbatical from social media. And I will be, you know, hey, welcome back. Here it is. Very soon. For sure. Uh, thank you guys for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. Thank you for allowing me to calm down throughout the duration of this video because, you know, might seem stupid to some, but I don't think it's stupid to all. Snakes are scary. And that's it. But I'm out of here for today because I have calmed down and I'm going to go inside and have a nice cup of tea just because that was a, that was a journey, you guys. So I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.